So right now the car will be a crank no start. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have this 2017 Ford Transit Connect. It's a pretty neat little blacked out van. It's got the four cylinder engine, 2.5 liter. And customer complaint is, uh, check engine light came on and it would refuse to start in the cold. It would just crank, 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 crank. He said he killed his battery. Finally got it started. Once it warms up, it seems to run fine. And then he said the cooling fan is on like full blast all the time. The radiator fan. Interesting. And he says, you know, once it warms up, it drives fine. But if it cools down really hard, you know, crank no start. So what's your first guess? I'm thinking coolant temperature sensor. That fan is commanded on that if the engine doesn't know what temperature you know the coolant is then the fuel mixture will be wrong especially on a cold start and you'll have the fan run as a safety so quick scan for codes in the PCM we have four codes stored P0116 yep sure enough ECT engine coolant temperature sensor one circuit range performance error engine coolant excess temperature state cylinder head temperature too high Starter motor deactivated, engine crank time too long. Okay, well that's because uh, I didn't want to start. So let's focus on the uh, 0116 code. And right away, let's just go to live data. And see what the sensor reads. <clears throat> then we'll run the car. And uh, they said the temperature gauge is always in the middle, so it's in some kind of like default state. So let's see here. Okay, so these are the only temperature PIDs that I found. Intake air temp, cylinder head temperature. It says no air on that sensor. Cylinder head temperature degrees, 221 degrees Fahrenheit and intake air transmission fluid that's all I found there's no like engine coolant temperature but let's run the, the van and see if any of these are out of spec well I'm not seeing anything weird on the scanner so far we're at 220 degrees Fahrenheit on the cylinder head temperature and it's steady right there about 221 the temperature gauge itself is slightly below the middle line the cooling fan is on you can hear it but I think that's because there are codes set here so this is not as obvious as for example a faulty engine coolant temperature sensor um, what could have happened perhaps like a thermostat got stuck or something stuck closed it actually did overheat set the codes and now it's just you know say I'm not gonna pay attention to engine temperature but we need to reproduce this problem right now uh, sitting in the van I don't see any any problems occurring we'll just idle it here and see if the temperature creeps up but in the meantime we can look up that code description and uh, see what that's all about like right there we're up to 235 Back to 231, that, I think that's pretty warm. <laughs> and when I pulled the car in, it actually had an engine over temperature in the display there. All right, let's read up the code description for the P0116, engine coolant temperature sensor one circuit range performance. This DTC sets when the engine coolant temperature or cylinder head temperature value is higher than the calibrated value could prevent one or more of the OBD monitors from completing. PCM runs this logic after an engine off in a calibrated soak period, typically six hours. The soak period allows intake air temperature and the engine coolant temperature and cylinder head temperature to stabilize and not differ by greater than a calibrated value. 
This DTC sets when all of the following conditions are met. 1. The engine coolant temperature at the engine start exceeds the intake air temperature at engine start by greater than a calibrated value, 30 Fahrenheit. That's 1. Engine coolant temperature exceeds a calibrated value, typically 225 Fahrenheit. That did happen. We're at 230. Fuel system heat oxygen misfire monitors have not completed. Calibrated time to set this DTC has expired. Possible causes, the sensor itself or coolant system concern. Make sure intake air temperature and engine coolant temperature or cylinder head temperature are similar when the engine is cold. Also make sure the ECT or CHT sensor and the actual engine operating temperatures are the same. Okay. So, I think in this case, we have to shut the vehicle off, park it, come back next morning and look at the intake air and the coolant temp sensors and see what the values are. Well, after a drive, it's up to 250 degrees engine coolant temperature. So that's not normal. However, I still think it's the sensor fault because um, when the car is dead cold, all this weird stuff happens. Like it's a long, you know, basically a crank no start. So we'll take a look at the data once the car is cold tomorrow morning. Good morning. So the Ford Transit Connect is well cooled in the garage here. It's been sitting overnight. Temperature is about 40 degrees. So let's plug in the scanner, turn on the key, and see what happens. What the temperature reads, what happens on the dash, if any code set, and see if this cylinder head temperature sensor is at fault. The sensor lives actually right here up top next to this ignition coil. If you look at our service info, it's actually really easy to get to. So if we get a weird reading, we'll unplug that and see if that's what the problem is. All right, we're in the van. Let's turn the key on. Look at that. The temperature just went up to the middle. That's not okay. <laughs> so let's go right into the scanner and look at our data. All right, well, we see the problem. Cylinder head temperature is 194. That's definitely incorrect. <laughs> so we either have a sensor problem or a bad ground on that sensor. Let's see what happens when we unplug it. So right now, the car will be a crank no start. Okay, and 3.7 volts is our value, so let's go unplug that sensor. All right, so to make access easier, I'm just gonna pop out this number two ignition coil. Wow, there's a, a lot of water in there. It's kind of weird. Let's unplug the sensor. There's a lot of water in there. All right, so I got the sensor unplugged. We're down to 1.3 volts, 140 degrees. That doesn't make any sense either. It should be like minus 40 degrees. And there is a ton of water under this, in this valley. I don't know if I can get the camera in here. Here's my pick. It's literally like half an inch deep. That really blows my mind. Where is this well, all this water coming from? Is it condensation? Wow. 
Okay, well. My question is why do we have one point on this connector? Uh-oh. That's not good. Is there water bridging those terminals? 1.25 volts. Let's blow this out and see what the voltage... I mean, right now it should be like 5 volts. Right? If it's open circuit, we should have 5 volts on one wire, and the other one should be a ground. So that's, uh, that's a, definitely a problem. So we're doing an actual voltage measurement on these two pins. You can see one of them is brown. On the left pin, that's a ground. We have 17 millivolts. On the right pin, 1.2 volts. And that agrees with our scanner. It says 1.3 volts, which is apparently equal to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's clean up this connector. Maybe take that yellow holder out, clean up those pins, make sure we have 5 volts on there, and then we have to figure out what's causing the swimming pool. So just using a pick, we can get this yellow holder piece out of here, hopefully. This connector is full of water. That's definitely a problem. So we might not need any parts. And look at those pins. Ah, oh, nasty. Full of water and corrosion. So I'm going to blow out this connector here and watch that voltage see if it drops or it should go up to 5 volts yep there it goes five volts and now that is a default temperature First you saw it go down to like minus 40, now it's back up to 230, open circuit, we definitely set another code. And it's going to say like temperature, sensor, open circuit probably. Um, Nope, still the P0116 circuit range performance error. So, yeah, clean this mess up. Let's pop all the coils out, see if what's causing that pool of water. If it's just condensation, then well, I don't know. That there's no real solution except to like maybe vent somehow vent that cavity. And we can spray some deoxid on those pins, clean those up. Let's do that. Pop our little yellow connector back in here. All that water come out. <laughs> There's a major pool of water in there. And also in the connector itself. So I need to dry that out. So I got all the coils out and looking at these wells. <clears throat> Number one looks like an individual well. It does have some water in it. Two and three are connected with the cavity for that temperature sensor 
and they are completely full of water. And then number four is dry. Go explain that one. So how's the water getting in here? That's my main question. Is it draining off the cowl? And then dripping onto the engine? <laughs> I have no idea. But there's supposed to be drain holes, like the water's supposed to drain along here and then go into those drain holes on the side. So how the heck are we accumulating that much water in here? It's definitely water, it's not coolant. Let's uh, blow it out. So, number one, blew that out, put the coil back in. Number four is already dry, put the coil back in there. Now we just need to do two and three. So, a little paper towel action and. That's pretty insane. <laughs> I'm just gonna soak everything up and try to get it dry. And then we can spray the windshield with with some water and see if there's any water intrusion out to this engine. But that's a weird problem. Water does not belong on top of the engine. <laughs> okay, so one more coil and the connector. Let's put a little bit of dielectric grease on this, these two pins here, just to prevent any water intrusion again. And we still need to come up with a solution for this issue. Plug that back in, and then the last coil. So what, put in the comments what you think the problem is here. Why was that water in there? So very easy solution here is to leave this boot for the temperature sensor up so that cavity is now vented. So when the engine heats up that water will actually boil off and evaporate and the, that cavity can breathe. I think that's the best solution here so no parts required. Let's uh, plug in the scanner, clear the codes, and this thing should fire right up. Alright, so clear fault memory, yes. Okay, read fault code. No DTCs, excellent. Let's go into our data stream one more time. And it's already selected. Okay, awesome. 3.4 volts on our sensor. We're at 60 degrees. Ambient air is 42. That's close enough. We can wiggle the connector, make sure that the voltage reading is good. This thing should fire right up and run. No problems. No parts required, we'll let it warm up for a little bit here and make sure that temperature reading doesn't exceed, you know, 210 degrees. Oh man, it's a gorgeous day. Not too cold. Take this sucker for a little spin. North wind going on, it's driveways drifting over a little bit. I have to run the plow through here a couple times. <laughs> this 
so far on the data stream let's see we're up to 116 degrees all right we went for a 10 mile test drive temperature is steady about 185 that's perfect cooling fans didn't kick on yet but it's cold outside so it's going to take a while for them to kick on but there's our vent you can see little droplets of water <laughs> on that connector so whatever water is left in there it's it's drying out everything's drying out so we'll leave that rubber plug off let that cavity you know breathe so this problem won't ever happen again i think that's it so thanks a lot for watching pretty interesting problem main thing is no parts required we'll see you next time bye-bye All right, a little bonus footage. I want to see these cooling fans kick on so we can return this car to the customer guaranteed. I know it's a fix, but keeping the RPMs up. We're at 200 degrees right now, 201. You can see our voltage there. Huh. So this is a smart sensor that's very interesting I'm glad we recorded this you saw as it dropped a half a volt boom it switched to 3.5 how's that possible well the circuit in the computer is smart and actually changes the voltmeter portion of it for that last half a volt it basically puts in a bigger resistor so now your voltage is at three and a half and it uses that to have a fine measurement in that last half a degree so this is not just a linear thermistor well the sensor is but the measuring circuit switches over at half a volt or 200 degrees so you can measure this temperature much more accurately so our cooling fan should kick on at about 212 Let's see if the cooling fan's on. Yes, it is. Excellent. Ramping up. It's a variable speed fan. You hear it slow down as the temperature decreases. 208, 206. Two hundred four, two hundred three, fan is off. Well, we're not done with the Ford Transit just quite yet. I'm still not satisfied with the explanation of condensation building up over three years. Why was the other spark plug hole, number four, bone dry? Number one hole had water and then the, the middle two. So I'm just pouring some water over the windshield and seeing do we have a water leak that's ending up on this cylinder head on the valve cover and then filling that area with water. So let's spray, spray the cowl uh-oh there it is that's not good <laughs> that will completely fill up our cylinder head it's perfect it's like a little spout so that's the issue here why is that leaking so bad well this cowl is a little loose and then I noticed these bolts weren't quite like tighten all the way down I don't know if someone's been here it's just a little loose so we can I don't know try to go through these and tighten these down a little bit do the spray test again
Definitely made it better. You can always put an extra little cover over here. If that's the area where it's leaking. That's just not the best design. So also make sure these cowl drain areas are clear. I think there might be a little mouse nest in there or something. A lot of debris. So after tightening down these cowl bolts, no more leaks. So I don't know why they would have been loose. I'll ask the owner, but I don't know if this car ever had any work done on it where they had to remove the cowl. Not sure, but that was definitely the root cause of the water leak filling that cavity and eventually messing up the signal to our cylinder head temperature sensor. So for now, I'm still going to leave this cover off and it doesn't really matter. Like, it's not a bad thing that the cavity can breathe. I don't think they'll get much, you know, debris in there. It's a pretty clean area up here. But I think uh, you have to, you know, in a diagnosis, it's not just the electrical part. Yeah, we found the problem, we fixed the problem, but we want to prevent the problem from happening again. That's the extra step that you have to take to prevent either comebacks or, I mean, you don't want this problem to happen again in the future. So we want to fix it for good. And sometimes it takes a little extra time, a little more research to find out why we had water in there. So it was indeed, I believe, rainwater drain off from the cowl onto the valve cover. And there you go. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.